Welcome to a new video by DJSPRC. We're back with Project Cherokee here. Today, what I wanted to show you, it's something that um, not maybe certain, maybe certain hobby shop would sell, but the uh, great hobbies do not sell this parts here. This is a 3D printed fender, fenders for the uh, SCX-10 II. Now, Axial does have uh, basically a clear plastic you can paint black if you want to for this vehicle but I wanted to do 3d printed to be just a little bit different compare just kind of a, a stock file now uh, this like I, I was saying does not come from my local hobby shop maybe certain hobby shops in your sector might sell these or print them for you now you could get these printed off a couple of places uh, by grabbing the file. I'll try to link the file in the, in the description on the bottom here because you could go to uh, some libraries. Uh, they'll have a 3D printer you can basically rent and print off your files. Uh, this was printed uh, in front of my friend Dan. Uh, if you're listening, Dan, thank you very much again. And uh, let's uh, install it. I did. We have rear front, kind of a sector here in the, to finish the flare, and we do have a, a bed cover. I did do one side already that you have right here. And prevents a lot of stuff from when you're playing going inside the electronics and dirtying it. Uh, and basically they are printed off with holes that align with the physical chassis. This is the rear. Uh, you remove the bolt that holds your rear bumper mount and bolt it here. Here, there's no bolt on the chassis. Basically, I just grab a nut and a bolt and be able to bolt it. Uh, let's start by removing the rear, rear screw that holds the back bumper. Now, even if you decide to, in the near future, to upgrade your front uh, bumper mount, it's still going to work with this guy here, because even my front is upgraded to aluminum, and the fender flare is still bolted to it. It's still impressive what we can do with, uh, basically, a 3D printer these days. When I started in the hobby, uh, we had nothing 3D printed. We had uh, basically uh, some Tamiya and we had Lucy. Our options were a little bit limited, what we had. Now I'm just gonna grab my a nut and basically a screw. on the side here no, it doesn't want to be a line now it's they're not always 100% perfect you might need to do some modification to yours this one here needed just a little bit of love tap should I say now and depending on the physical nut you'll be grabbing you'll be different from mine here this is a 5.5 I'm just grabbing a socket and uh, kind of a pry bar and I don't want to go too tight to break the plastic itself And it is lock washers, and, uh, not lock washers, like nylon nuts. That way they won't back off. Now this is solid. The other thing I did too, I don't know if you can really see, oh, you can. Uh, I notched out the plastic here because on my chassis, I do have another piece of plastic and the plastic was interfering the way it was sitting here. Because this is basically key to go here and you bolt these two together here and it was basically this was sitting like close to 45 degree now it's sitting more straightish 
Now I'm going to grab a, again another nut and a bolt. This time I'm just grabbing a 12 mil and I'm putting a plastic spacer because I want to have my bolt the head size a little bit wider not to interfere completely in the plastic. Now I'm going to insert it with my nut. Screw it in until it stops. And you could remove your physical wheel to be able to do this, but I'm a little bit stubborn. Okay, a little bit more than the little, a lot. Just for some reason right now, this is not working. Grab my socket again. Tighten this guy up. Again, I don't want it super tight. I want it very snug. That way it doesn't move. Pop this guy's back in the sock, socket, but it hole. And the rear is done. And like I said, they're, they're solid. For a 3D printed material, very solid. Now front, you'll need to remove your two bolts. One that holds your battery tray and one holds your physical bumper mount. Now the other thing, I'll, uh, on this one I may not need to. On the other side I put a little bit longer uh, screw because you have to account the thickness of the uh, material itself. Yeah, I might need to change it. Now it is to channel to go in the physical rails of the vehicle itself. Originally, I don't know who exactly did this file, but <laughs> that was a smart, smart idea. Screw it in. Now even gives you ways to be able to put axle lights if you want to be use, if you want to see your axles. That could be a future upgrade for me. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do it or not. Now what the other thing that you could do right here, there's no way to be able to screw this down. Uh, you could drill a hole and put a bolt if you want to, or just a little bit of two-way tape. I know it's very hard to see right here. You could do that too. Then we grab our back one here. That's designed to bolt in these two holes here. And you could use longer bolts for your rear and remove the stock pins and put two bolts to be able to bolt down your, your bed because the holes are made for it. There we go. Now, like I said, I'll try to put the link of the file in the description. 
If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to be notified next time I upload a video, don't forget to hit that bell notification in the corner. And if you have any questions or comment, please post them below. I'll be gladly to try to answer you guys. And thank you for watching.